me share with you a very interesting story about myself. I grew up stammering. It was so bad such that I couldn't finish words, words of sentences. So those that I grew up with and those that I was with during my primary school days and secondary school days can attest on how bad I used to stammer. And because of stammering, uh, a feeling within myself began growing. Uh, and that was the feeling of inadequacy. You know, the feeling that you are not good enough. Uh, you are a secondary human being. Uh, you are not just exceptional. You are just this average person. You know, that feeling began creeping in because I was not just understanding too why I could not speak like my fellow young people. So that feeling began brewing and as it was brewing, um, this feeling of inadequacy you know, kept pressing on and I began thinking, Esh, I can't amount to much. And I, at that point, I was settling in to say, Esh, I will not be any exceptional being. Uh, I settled for the fact that I can be an average human being. I wouldn't, of course, I, I knew that I, I wouldn't be, you know, very poor. But at the same time, I knew that I wouldn't be very rich. I was just comfortable as an average person. I knew that I might have some influence, but again, I knew that I would not really be influential. So I settled for this average, you know, kind of arrangement, and I felt I'll grow up to be this average adult. And I was okay with it. I was very comfortable with it. And this can be seen um, as I was growing up in terms of leadership roles. Uh, because I felt I was, I was inadequate, I can share that I never got to hold any position. I never got to hold any position as class monitor in class, uh, prefect, captain, um, any roles that one could have. Not even, you know, um, a leader of a mayor school club. I couldn't hold that kind of a position because I was so convinced that I am not just good enough. I cannot just be exceptional. I cannot lead, you know, I, I, I cannot be at the helm of whatever. I felt I was just okay as an average person and I settled just there. I felt I'm just here. I don't have to be below average. I can just be average and I settled for that. And after my secondary school days, um, now during the holidays now, you know, after grade 12, uh, the feeling, I started having this feeling of dissatisfaction uh, towards my inadequacies. You know, I started feeling unsatisfied with my inadequacies. I started thinking, I think I can be something more than this. I think I can attain something more than, you know, above average. And it was at about the same time that I read a book called um, Gifted, Gifted Hands by Dr. Ben Carson. And when I read that book, it clearly, you know, um, made my mind settle that anybody can be somebody. And it was so clear. And it was at that point that then I decided that it would be so great to make it and really get to be so exceptional. It was a decision that I then made. And when I made that decision, I started taking myself seriously. I started to take instantly. I started taking myself seriously. And I said these words to myself that maybe the world was waiting for a time such as this when I will be alive. Now, when I made that decision, there was a dramatic, drastic change on how things just began moving and how things just got to change. Like take for instance, my stammering, you know, went down almost instantly. Uh, I drastically improved with my speech. I, I, I began feeling it that, you know, I can do it, I can make it. And if you look through my tertiary education, I got to be a leader, you know, for the first time. And during my tertiary education, I was chosen as the chairperson uh, for campus ministries, uh, which is a religious role. And at the same time, I was then voted in as the union president. And I led so well to a point that I became the first student to ever be voted in for the second term as the union president. It was quite interesting. And funny enough, I was the union president and at the same time, the campus ministry's chairperson, which was unprecedented. You know, you wouldn't have the same person holding, you know, those two roles. 
And really, I could feel that I can make an impact. And if you look through, uh, when I was 22, I even got to be uh, the Parent Teachers Association uh, at the school down McKinney Road called, Ch called Chikwama, you know, uh, basic school. I got to be the Parent Teachers Association and then I was just 22 years old. And the second youngest person in the committee that I was leading was about 40 years old. And I got on to lead and I was chosen again and again because at that point I, I began having this feeling that I am born for a reason and I can make a difference and maybe the world has been waiting for a time such as this. And of course from that I've gone on to lead in main leadership roles, in main boards and whatnot. And this is without mentioning my entrepreneurial journey. For those of you that have actually been following my page, uh, you should you know, have an idea of my entrepreneurship journey and the impact that I've actually made in that space. And the impact that I made when I was still you know, in my 20s or early 20s. Um, so that is for you to actually research on. But the basic line is this. The moment I decided and I started taking myself seriously, I had this drastic change in my life and I had this um, uh, drastic improvement on how I began carrying myself. I started taking myself seriously. And I, I, I just felt today that I should share this because there are people who might possibly be thinking, I think I'm cut off to be average. There are people who've just settled that for me, it's okay. Um, a two-bedroom house, a three-bedroom house, I am fine. You know, a simple vehicle that can move me from point A to point B, I am okay. I don't, I don't need to make an impact. And there could be that feeling that um, you just feel settled. You feel like you can't match uh, and amount to anything. You might feel like, okay, fine, this is, this is what I was meant to be. Uh, you might feel that I don't need to get in any way exception, I can't impact the world uh, in any way uh, except impact my family and just a few people around myself. I felt I should remind you to say, you see people that have impacted the world and changed the world, we are human beings just like yourself and myself. The people that we read in, in our history books we are human beings, just like yourself and myself. They are not exceptionally different from us. They are just mere, you know, flesh and blood. Nothing so different between themselves and ourselves. We are just the same. It is only that they made a resolve that they would want to impact the world. That is the decision they made. They made a decision and believed that they can change the narrative of the world. That is what they did. And because they did that, uh, they were then able to make drastic changes and improved and made the world a better place. And that is why we read about them. But a number of us have settled and we think we are not cut off from the cloth of excellence. We are not cut off from the cloth that would make us exceptional beings. I thought of reminding you to say the fact that you are alive, the fact that you are unique and you are you, there is a special reason why you are in this world. Don't just settle. Don't just settle and don't just be complacent with, with mediocrity. Don't just be okay with average. You can do exceptional things. But the challenge that we tend to have is that we tend to have this self-doubt. If you took yourself seriously, there is so much more that you can achieve. And I want you to realize that your number one enemy is self-doubt. And if you hear that voice within yourself saying, no, you can't do this, just push yourself and do it. And you realize one thing, as you'll be doing it, that voice that says you can't do it, it will be getting silenced further and further. So that moment when it just creeps in that you can't do something, just get to do it. That voice of your inability will begin getting silenced. And don't even allow others to try and silence you. Don't allow their limitations to spill over to you. Let them not determine what you can and what you cannot do. The only person who can determine what you can do is yourself. And I can share this. You see, last year, 
I had I had an event uh, at the stadium. It was um, an entrepreneurship conference. I was told time without number that you cannot hold a conference at a stadium. It is just practically impossible. It has never been done and it cannot just be done. But guess what? I didn't allow the limitations of others to determine how far I could go. We had an event at the stadium and guess what? It was the biggest gathering of entrepreneurs in Africa. The biggest gathering of entrepreneurs in Africa against all odds. What I'm basically putting across is that don't let others limit what you can and what you cannot do. And every time I fight with self-doubt, I fight that all the time. And every day I put up a huge fight against self-doubt. And I believe there is so much more that I will achieve and so much more that I can achieve. It has nothing to do with, the fight that I put up has nothing to do with me being better than someone else. That is, that is not important to me. The fight that I put in is against self and my personal self-doubt. As such, I thought of encouraging you that take yourself seriously. This world has been waiting for a time such as this when you'll be alive. Don't pass through this life incognito. Don't pass through this life without making any impact such that immediately you are dead, we can't see any difference in this world. If we held our hands together, we'll make this world a better place. I just thought of sharing that with you and this is the message from the radical entrepreneur. And you know what? The future is bright. <laughs>